Okay, so this is just going to be a quick little video of um, kind of a walkthrough of this flowchart and how to use it and how to tell uh, how, which factoring method to use for which problems. So your first step for every factoring problem is get the GCF out of the way. And I can't overemphasize how important that is. Pretty much on exams, when people don't get the GCF out of the way, they, they get it wrong. It's, it's possible to kind of recover at the end. Almost no one does. Got to do this as your first step. It'll help you a bunch. Um, it probably won't be prime. Now and again it is, but probably not. And so then you're going to count the number of terms. So you're going to have two terms, four terms, or three terms. So four terms is the easy one to spot. There's only one choice. That's our factor by grouping that we saw in section 5.1. If it has three terms, there's uh, one of three things it's going to do. It's either going to lead with a 1, so it'll look like just a plain old x squared up front. And that's the kind where we just do the parentheses. We set up our x's and then figure out what multiplies the end, adds to the middle. So we saw that in 5.2. The next thing it could be is it could have squares on either end or both ends, I should say, um, in which case it's one of these factoring formulas here that we saw in 5.4. We like those. That's where we just do the parentheses with the square and basically write down the answer. And if it doesn't lead with one, it doesn't have squares on the ends, then that means you're stuck using a magic method from section 5.3. So that's our three-term problems. And then for two terms, it's going to be one of two things. It's either going to have, well, it could just be a GCF with a little two-term factor um, left over. So occasionally we do run into that. But most of the time, it's going to be um, squares on the ends or cubes on the ends. So squares on the ends we saw in 5.4. That's our A plus B, A minus B difference of squares. And then cubes on the ends, that's that cube formula we saw in 5.5. 5. There's one with a minus, one with a plus. Um, that's this thing where the th signs go same, opposite, positive. And this is just a pattern you have to know. Um, there's pretty much no way to get from here to here without um, just sort of either having that memorized or memorizing the pattern. Uh, the other last thing I'll point out is on the back of this, <coughs> there's examples of each of the styles I just talked through. I won't go through these in the video, um, but just if you want to see, uh, you know, each of the different styles and what they look like that's on the back of this.